from Silicon Valley, California. This is Fresh Dialogues. Hello and welcome. My name is Alison Van Diggelen. I'm host of Fresh Dialogues. My guest today is Richard Lowenthal. He's CEO of Coulomb Technologies. Thank you for joining me today, Richard. Thanks, my pleasure. I'd like to start with your fascinating journey from VP at Cisco Systems to Mayor of Cupertino and then co-founder of Coulomb Technologies. Can you talk about what got you into the green arena? It was term limits that actually caused me to create uh, Coulomb Technologies. I had gone then uh, to some clean tech conferences and, and started to attend them rather regularly to see if there was a company that I could do that would combine a social conscious with my uh, ability to do high tech, you know, and so I want to mix the two. Um, and uh, I, ultimately what happened is I went and visited Tesla Motors up in Redwood City and fell in love with the place. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the, the engineers, they were all excited about the product they were doing, and they were changing the world, plus doing a cool product. Good. And Was I it? got infected with that, you know. It's, it's, it, re it really is what we want to do. We, we love to do great new cool products and was it the car the tesla car or was it elon musk or was it just no the whole it was the it was the engineers, the engineers you know it was the engineers mm -hmm. so excited and i went on the tour and everybody was very excited and then i ordered a car during the tour i was i was ah. caught up in it you know so do you have your tesla i, I don't and that's another story but ultimately it, the, the car i'm driving today is an electric vehicle it's the bmw mini e electric vehicle so ah. Uh, but anyway, you know, I, that was a very interesting experience, and it harkened back to when I became mayor of Cupertino. As a perk of the office, I got an electric vehicle. It was the Toyota RAV4, and wow. that was my first EV experience. So Tesla was a little bit of going home. Um, but, uh, and then I went and watched uh, the movie called Who Killed the Electric Car, which was also part, part of the reason for the starting of Coulomb. Uh, and I thought there was a missing villain in that in that uh, that movie, which was what's called range anxiety, mm -hmm. uh, and that's you're driving your electric vehicle and you're afraid of your battery going dead and you're being stuck. That's yes. range anxiety, uh, and and the sort of aha for me was that uh, that we would take on uh, the the job of curing range anxiety, making it a thing of the past, so that. When you were in the showroom and considering buying an electric vehicle, you wouldn't hesitate to buy electric because of range anxiety. So that's what our company, that's what we were founded right. to do. And have you achieved that goal already two years later? Just well, two years later? I, th I think we're well prepared to achieve it, and we certainly have made inroads. Um, our approach to it was different than any other, any other people looking at the market. Our approach was that it had to work in the capitalistic system. Uh, people had to make money, uh, and if they made money building out the charging infrastructure for electric vehicles, it would come. Uh, and, uh, and that led us to using networking solutions so that you could have a billing system and maintenance systems and monitoring systems uh, to make it affordable and make it so people could, could make money or at least not lose money running uh, charging networks. Uh, and so it, it pulled in our networking skills from the past, mine from Cisco and my partners from Lucent and others from 3Com and Echelon. So it turned out we started the company with my old networking buddies. Great, <laughs> so lots came of fun. Together. Yeah. Good, good. And uh, in San Jose, the San Jose City was the, one of the first municipalities to take on your charging stations. How is that working out? Does Say I have an electric vehicle today. Yeah. How many stations, charging stations, are at are in this network in San Jose? Oh, in San Jose, there aren't too many. I think there's just five. Mm -hmm. It's probably about the number of electric vehicles here, though, too. Right. <laughs> so, uh, but but worldwide, we have uh, oh probably around a thousand stations now. Our our largest single customer now is the city of Amsterdam, who has about two hundred stations. So, mm -hmm. and how so, many electric cars are in Amsterdam? Do you know? Oh, maybe twenty. <laughs> right. Not too so, many. so we so, really are early. We are early in the game. Yeah, and p that was part of our premise because, as as I told you, the reason we started was to was to enable these electric vehicles to be sold and to encourage people to buy them and not worry about range anxiety. And to do that, you have to have them there out in front. Right. If you look at a place like the city of San Francisco, where we have stations. Uh, 
there, there are six times as many cars as garages in San Francisco, which you may have noticed if you've ever tried to park yes, downtown. Yes, absolutely. Nightmare. <laughs> so, yes. So yeah, it is a nightmare. And so uh, you really need charging stations out in the public for people in San Francisco. Otherwise, they'll never buy an electric vehicle. And is part of your business plan to ultimately have your charging stations in people's homes? So it is, and that's coming soon. Uh, right now, it's a small part of our market. It's only 2% of our market, but that's because there's so few vehicles. Uh, so what we're seeing are cities and businesses that are getting ready for the electric vehicle, and so they're putting stations out there to welcome people and to make, them, make people understand that if you live in San Francisco, there will be a place to charge. So, so we're seeing a lot of public stations now that are shared. But when the automakers start delivering vehicles, most of them will come with a charging station. For example, for the smart electric vehicle that's coming out this year. The Nissan Leaf? No, the smart from the, oh, it comes from, from Daimler Benz. Right. right, yes. Uh, you've seen the smart car. Funny, yes, a, a yes. A little, little bit of a car. Uh, that car, we'll be doing all of the home charging for that, that vehicle. And so when somebody buys one of those smart electric vehicles, we'll get a copy of the sales receipt and we'll go to the person's home and install a station. So, right. so as the vehicles come out, we'll see home stations too. Right. And what about the Nissan LEAF? So that's very exciting. It's, it's, mm -hmm. uh, what's, what's to me very exciting about the LEAF is, is that Nissan is clearly committed to this market and com committed a very high volume of vehicles to the market. Uh, and they're not doing a wait and see. They're assuming success, which I think is wonderful. Uh, so they're talking about hundreds of thousands of cars. Uh, so do you see it as a tipping point for electric vehicles? I think the arrival of these vehicles will certainly be great for our business <laughs> because, you know, now our business has been great and basically has doubled every quarter since uh, we started shipping in the very beginning of 2009. Uh, so we're excited about that. That's without any vehicles, but uh, for sure the arrival of the vehicles will be wonderful for our business. And the way we see it, uh, each vehicle needs two charging stations, one for while you're sleeping and one for while you're working. And so when Nissan talks about 100,000 vehicles, to us that's 200,000 stations, each one costing about uh, $2,000. So, so it's a really substantial business. Great, great. And I hear you even have an I, iPhone app. Oh, we do. Yes. So tell us about that. What does that do for you? Well, so, so the, you know, I'm, I'm kind of the typical EV driver now with my BMW Mini E. And when I drive to San Francisco, it uh, turns out my Mini E has a range of about 90 miles, uh, but San Francisco is 50 miles away from my office. So I need to charge uh, when I'm in San Francisco or I don't get home that night. Mm -hmm. But before I go, I use my smartphone, you know, whether it's a BlackBerry or an iPhone, uh, to, uh, to I put in the address of, of the place I'm going to visit, the office I'm going to visit, and it'll show me the station closest to, to that point that isn't in use, so I know I can go up and charge. So I drive to that location, plug in my car, and then the iPhone or BlackBerry, either one, uh, then has a button on it I can push that starts the charging cycle and starts the vehicle charging. So, But the big thing is being able to navigate to an available station, because I need to or I don't get home. Right, so it's got the GPS in it. Too. It does. It has a GPS. Great. It finds my station. Uh, and quite importantly, since they could be busy for four hours, it finds one that's not currently in use. And what is your ultimate vision, Richard? So uh, ultimately, for, for our company, what we'd like to see is that people, when they go to the showroom, they're excited to buy electric. And if, if you buy one, you do love it. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, drive, I drive this Mini, and I, I just love driving it. It's, it's wonderful. And I don't want people to hesitate. I want them to be excited about it. The nice thing about these cars, whether it's a Tesla Roadster or my Mini or any other EV, is that they should be no compromise cars. You should be excited that you bought one and you should, be, you should enjoy the privilege of having one. Uh, and so, so that's what we want to have. Where People don't buy it necessarily out of social conscience. They buy it because they love it. Well, Richard Lowenthal, I want to thank you very thank much you. for joining me on Fresh Dialogues. Ah, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. And please join us again on Fresh Dialogues for more interviews with green-focused entrepreneurs and venture capitalists and celebrities. Thank you. Great right. job.